Hey, okay, question number 10. What are houses like? How big are the average families? So, houses, um, say goodbye to carpet, because it doesn't exist in Costa Rica. Tile is really common. What's really common is to have uh, concrete walls, like this wall behind me, with a tile floor. Like, you can see the tile on my floor. Um, sort of interesting uh, fact about the about house construction here in Costa Rica is that that beam right there and that one right there, uh, those are actually intentionally put to help with the stability of the framework of the house uh, if there is an earthquake, which we have every once in a while. I have been here for multiple trimmers, but nothing too, too big. I think they're really fun, and they just, everything kind of shakes, and it kind of feels like you're in, I don't know, like swinging in a hammock, maybe? And uh, usually they just last like three to five seconds and you just kind of like shake. For whatever reason, it seems like they usually happen at night because most often I experience them or I felt them when I'm in bed. And so that's really fun because you just like lag in bed and just kind of wave back and forth. I've never been here for an earthquake that's strong enough to like knock anything off a wall or break anything. So that's, I just think it's kind of fun. <laughs> um, one specific type of house that's really common in Costa Rica is called a bono, which means bonus, and that is a government subsidized house that um, is built for lower income Costa Ricans. And it has a specific layout of living room, dining room, entrance area, kitchen, and then some order of bedroom, bedroom, bathroom. So it is a two bedroom, one bathroom, kitchen, dining room house, and it's a perfect square and it's kind of like, it's not prefabricated in the sense that it's like built and then delivered and plopped down, but it is sort of just like a cookie cutter house and then it has like a specific layout and they're kind of easy and quick to build. So there's that. Um, you don't see a lot of wood here. I, I am not super interested in like house construction and building materials and stuff like that. But I did go to um, a teacher's house. She invited me over for coffee a couple weeks ago. And I, I just went in and she had like wood paneling walls. And I was like, whoa, ho, ho. <laughs> I haven't seen this in forever. So I'm not totally sure why, but yeah, wood is not, not very common here for walls or for floors or for anything. Um... Oh, how big are our average families? Um, sort of like in America. I mean, it runs the gamut, obviously, but it's really common to have two or three kids. <laughs> One to three kids, I would say, is normal. My host family um, actually had four all together. Uh, one of them committed suicide about four years ago. Uh, so now they have three kids, and one of them does not live at home with me. Uh, he is not married, but uh, has a girlfriend who he lives with, and they have a baby who's two. And he's 21, I think. That's a not uncommon situation in Costa Rica. S suicide, um, to mention that, is actually rather uncommon, but it does happen. Um, but... Teenage pregnancies are unfortunately very common here, and abortions are illegal, so essentially unheard of. Um, but yeah, and my host brother, Andres, his girlfriend, baby mama, is also pregnant with baby number two. So yeah, the I have, so they'll at least have two kids in their family. My current host family has three kids. Um, my training host family, they have four kids, but they're all adults by now, but they have, they have four kids. And my host aunt and uncle cousin that live that way, now that you can see them, they have, actually they just have one son. I have another host aunt and uncle that only have one daughter. And then my host aunt and uncle that live that way. The whole family lives on this street right here. Host aunt and uncle that lives that way, they have three kids, two daughters and one son. Uh, so yeah, that is to say there's not necessarily a norm, but sometimes you do think of 
maybe a traditional Latin American family as being enormous and having like 12 kids. That's not really the case in contemporary Costa Rican society. It was more common um, a couple generations ago. I have a host grandmother who has, uh, I think, like 11, 12, or 13 siblings. They're huge. The size of the family is huge. And they all get together <laughs> for family events every once in a while. It's overwhelming. Um, but yeah, nowadays, it's uh, families are more, more like what families are like in America. Sorry. Okay, do they have pets? My host family has a pet dog. It's a boxer. Um, they have a family rule that's really common in Costa Rica that it's exclusively an outside dog. They don't like to have. They don't like to have their dogs be inside and outside dogs. You either have inside dogs or outside dogs. They also have an aquarium. I think I maybe mentioned that before. So we have a few fish, and then I also have a fish. His name is Benjamin. <laughs> He's a beta fish. Here he is. <laughs> to uh, kind of feng shui in my room a little bit. It's like the only piece of decoration that I have. Why is his name Benjamin, you might ask? I had an, a, another beta fish. His name was Alexander, because I liked the name. And then Alexander died, and I kind of decided I should go through the alphabet. <laughs> so now I'm on Benjamin. Hopefully we don't get to Christopher. <laughs> um, pets are pretty common, though. Uh, especially dogs. Uh, not to just naysay Costa Rica, but uh, the tender loving care that dogs and pets receive in the United States, which admittedly is sometimes blown ridiculously out of proportion, and like people spend way too much money on their pets sometimes. But even if you're just like a normal pet owning American family, uh, you, the amount of attention you give your dog is almost guaranteed to be more than the time of attention that you the Costa Ricans give their pets. It's not as, it's not common to really take your dogs on walks here, for example, which is unfortunate, but it's kind of their uh, concept of pets here. It's, a, it's just kind of, they're there for you when you want to have fun with them, otherwise they just kind of, the pets hang out around the yard. What do kids play with? Uh, Soccer and TV are going to be your biggest recreational outlets for kids. Uh, yeah, no, that's, that's the biggest ones. <laughs> um, any sort of electronic devices are going to be common too. Cell phones or Game Boys or PlayStation and all of that. But yeah, no, soccer and TV is going to be your, your biggest answers. They don't have a lot of extracurricular activities here like we do in the United States so they don't have a school band or a school orchestra or organized sports teams or all of that so kids have a lot of free time here and it's easy to attribute the high drug consumption rates and high teenage pregnancy rates with the amount of free time that they have but I don't have, <laughs> I don't know, don't have a happy note to end that little tangent with. That's just, that's kind of the way things are. That's also why I'm here as a Peace Corps volunteer, specifically a youth development volunteer. Okay, cool. All oh, the next question is totally different, so I'll make a whole new video for it. So get ready to talk about plants and animals. <laughs>